Ah, I'm the peen bot. I run peen's place. I'm here to bring you peen's place. Peen's place is stuck in my code. I'm pulling it out. Peen's place. Get ready to enjoy peen's place, your favorite show. Activating peen's place protocol. Peen's place begins in three, two, one. Oh. What's up guys? Welcome to Paint's Place. Today I am sat underneath the oak tree known as uh, S Steve Ioke. E oh my god. And I'd like to offer to you two ideas that I have found very helpful in creativity and in art. I have found these things to be more helpful than any tutorial on, you know, how to paint, how to do this or that. These are mindset things that apply very broadly and have the potential to affect every area of your work. The first is creating till failure or working till failure. Now a really obvious example of what I mean by this is when people are trying to get stronger and they lift weights. So if I just do this with my arm, there's no resistance, it's very easy. There is no stimulus for my arm to grow. This isn't gonna do anything to the strength of my muscles. Now if I take some big old weight and I'm trying to do these and I'm struggling and I get through like five of them, you're really pushing your bicep there to its limit and you're giving it a stimulus to grow and your body reacts by building itself there and giving you more fibers and stuff to deal with the challenges you've been putting it through. And then you're a little bit stronger, you can load it up even more. You keep challenging yourself, you keep growing. And then before you know it, you're a total beefcake. And the same principle applies to pretty much everything. So let's say you're trying to work on your portrait painting, right? And there's a point that you can always get a portrait to, and that's kind of what you expect of yourself. Every time you get there and you don't know what to do and how to go beyond that, you stop. That's the exact point where you have to keep going. That's the point where the weight gets heavy and you're gonna make the gains. That bit up to there, you know how to do that. You've done that lots of times. It's this bit here that you have to push for. That's how you're gonna grow in your portrait skills. Now that little bit of growth might be a multitude of things. It might be the accuracy of your drawing, your skin tones, lighting, whatever. But you have to actively try and push past your limits and make that next portrait better than the last one. Nobody starts off with sweet skills. You try and you try and you try and through your trial and error and your failures, you learn what you need to change and adapt to go further. Now the other half of creating till failure or working till failure is being comfortable with failure. One of the main problems just about everyone faces is this fear of failure. But really it's such a critical tool for growth. So if you can become comfortable with failure, you're actually opening the door for yourself to grow so much more. Now, one of the ways I like to do this is to constantly try and learn brand new skills, things that I know I know nothing about and that I'm going to fail at a lot. And through doing that, essentially there's a part of me that is always failing at something. <laughs> and because of that, I am comfortable or at least always working on being more comfortable with failure. The most recent skill I've been doing this with is beatboxing. <laughs> I don't claim to be good at beatboxing at all, but that's my point. I don't care. I am open to the failure. Being fearless of failure allows me to be bolder with uh, my more primary skills, if you want to call them that, my art, my tricks. For example, with my tricks, I love breakdance stuff, but I was just, I, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> It was so hard. And when you're just grinding on your face, it's really easy to stop and go back to that thing that you're doing that's really cool and you know how to do. But if you want to break into new ground and gain these new skills, you have to physically or metaphorically grind your face into the ground for a little while. And that's okay. And the more you do that, the more you realize it's okay. So that's uh, thing number one, create until failure and also becoming comfortable with failure. Start seeing the word failure as a positive thing because it's one of the key factors of growth. Failure is great. Just make sure you're learning from it because that's how they help. Oh. 
Okay, new tree, thing number two. Everything is connected and you can completely use that to your advantage. This is really one of the things that's affected me and my work and how I learn things the most. So I really think it's worth trying to explain to you guys. I've created some helpful visuals to try and explain this concept. Coming up on screen now. So, look at this circle. For this example, it represents tricking. Now look at these three dots and all the ways they can connect with each other. These represent the first three tricks that you learn when you start tricking. Now look at this. This represents the first 10 tricks that you've learned. And even just with 10, look at how many more opportunities there are for connections with what you've learned. Now look at this circle. This represents complete mastery of tricking. Nothing you cannot do, nothing unexplored. Anything you can conceive of, you can manifest it. Wouldn't that be cool? Now let's take this back a level and look at this circle. For this example, these represent tricking, painting, and beatboxing, and the potential ways that they can connect with each other. Now here's the same example with 10 crafts and how they can connect and inform each other. And then of course, the next level is the ultimate circle of ultimate mastery. Now I'm not saying we're all gonna become these crazy ultimate masters at stuff, but my point is thinking this way about how you can connect different crafts and learn from them, you open the doors to make everything so much more useful to everything that you do. And the more connected your web of skills and crafts get, the more bespoke and unique your work can get. Because no one is making the same connections as you. And I think that's definitely a massive plus to any artist. I've learned so many lessons from tricking that I have applied directly to my painting. When we think of things like rhythm and flow and pacing, we probably think of music, but these concepts apply directly to painting, the rhythm and the flow of a composition. In filmmaking, the rhythm and the flow of the edit, the pacing of your story. If you can see everything as part of a greater whole, you're in a position to use every experience, every thing that you learn in every possible aspect of your work. And then it becomes almost more like innovative ways to learn about those concepts such as flow or rhythm, rather than I'm learning about dancing, I'm learning about painting. Something else that really excites me about thinking this way is the art that you could make involving all of these in a new way that only you have thought of because of your unique set of connections and skills. So that's why I love to think of art and creation as one big thing and these things that we might see as separate such as dance and painting as simply different mediums and your knowledge of a medium has a great potential to transfer over to other mediums and to be built on and brought over and ch -ch -ch -ch. so that's it those are the two things you got creating until failure and being comfortable with failure it's kind of one double up thing and then you have everything is connected you can use your experience and lessons you've learned from any medium to build on any other skill and to create a very unique and interesting web of connections that exist only to you. As I said, these are things that have been very useful to me. I find these ways of thinking very interesting, so that's why I'm sharing it with you. So hopefully this stuff helps you on your journey with your art and wherever it is that you're trying to go. If you're interested in following my work, links are down below. Subscribe if that's something you'd like to do. And most importantly, hope you had fun. Hope you learned something. I hope you'll come around again. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.